Gary Cartwright, you're here today to talk to EU reporter about the Holodomor, which was a, a near enough holocaust that took place in 1932 to 33 in the Ukraine when seven and a half million people died. I understand that you want to introduce this or make it more clear to the UK government exactly what happened. Can you explain a bit more, please? That's absolutely correct. In the space of around 10 months, under the direct orders of Joseph Stalin, some seven and a half million people, and that's a conservative estimate, by the way, were starved to death deliberately. One third of those seven and a half million were children. This took place, this uh, great famine, this politically induced famine, took place on some of the most fertile soil in Europe and was kept secret for many, many years. Nobody has ever been brought to justice. Now, what I'm trying to do is to get the UK government to acknowledge, to formally recognise Holodomor as a deliberate act of genocide. Some 25 countries, plus the European Union, recognise Holodomor as genocide, but the UK government to this point still hasn't done so. What I'm doing is I'm introducing a petition, a formal petition to Her Majesty's government, calling for them to actually recognise Holodomor as genocide under the terms of the 1948 UN Declaration on the Prevention and Prosecution of Genocide. Ina Shefonova, you are a representative of the Ukrainian community in Brussels, in Belgium. What do you feel that this would do for the Ukrainian people to have it recognised as an act of genocide? Well, it is very important to recognize it as an act of genocide because there is very, very little awareness about this great tragedy. Uh, these events uh, whereby millions of people have starved to death in the middle of Europe, and this happened only 83 years ago, is highly unknown at present. Uh, second reason why it is very important is that because there are still survivors of the Holodomor. They are very old. And, and living in the Soviet Union, they were not even able to speak about their experiences because it has been a criminal uh, offense talking about Holodomor. It is also very important for their children and grandchildren. While we started this campaign, we are getting emails, I'm getting messages from people living in Canada, in the United States, who write, thank you very much for writing about this. Thank you very much for this petition. We, uh, our parents or our grandparents have have survived Holodomor and or we know people who have survived Holodomor and thirdly this is very important to the Ukrainian nation as a whole it is very important to put this great tragedy the greatest tragedy in fact in the history of the Ukrainian nation behind and start looking into the future into the European future of Ukraine thank you why do you feel that the Holodomor has been so ill recognized down the 80 years as you say that it uh, since it happened well, this has happened inside of the Soviet Union and uh, uh, propaganda started work, working basically from the day one uh, of Holodomor. Um, not many people from foreign countries were able to, uh, to go to the areas impacted to see what has happened. However, there were a few brave journalists uh, also in the UK who actually reported the events honestly. There were staged visits by the Soviet government uh, for the Western politician who have painted a completely different picture to what has happened in, in fact on the ground. And as I said, there were laws uh, prohibiting uh, talking about Holodomor and, and similar crimes of the Soviet regime. And this was a criminal offense. And Gary, as far as I understand, a number, many EU countries have actually already recognized this as an act of genocide. Is it taking the UK too long, do you think? I think so, because the UK generally does take a lead on issues like this. Uh, I'm very concerned about the fact that uh, Her Majesty's government did receive legal advice that Holodomor was not an act of genocide under the terms of the 1948 declaration, when actually it very, very clearly is. Now, it's pure speculation on my part, but I believe that that decision was political. It was taken in a context I don't understand, uh, but I think that the time is right now to actually reinvestigate this, to address the issue, and uh, as we've just heard, Ukraine is looking forward to a, a future as part of the European community. It's a European nation. It's the largest nation in Europe in terms of size. Uh, it's as large as Germany and France combined. Uh, and I think that it is time to, to put the Soviet uh, history where it belongs, in the history books, and to move on. But this, uh, this particular issue, there are many, many people, in fact, the nation as a whole, seeking closure. And I think that it's time for the UK government to do the correct thing and to acknowledge what took place and what it actually was. 
You say seeking closure, Gary, but Ina, I would ask you, do you feel there should be still, 80 years on, recompense for the remaining survivors, if you like, or the relatives of the survivors of the Holodomor? I think we should take it step by step, and perhaps it is too early to think about any kind of compensation. Uh, first thing is to get Holodomor recognized as an act of genocide, uh, by UK, uh, by the UK in this case, then by the UN, um, and then we could talk about next steps.